Yes, I can, but as my grandma always said, I don't stop until the Lord says stop. And then when he says stop, sit down. Because a lot of people keep going and going and it's ruined everything they've said. Amen. But we see here in this passage of scripture on this morning that there is an attack that's about to take place against Jehovah. And his kingdom. Has anybody in here been under attack? I, it may just be in Danville. I don't know. I don't know if Lexington goes through it or not. But back at home, we go through some things. Amen. We go through some attacks. And, and we've been through some major attacks. But they said I drove all the way from Danville. And that don't really seem that far to me. But I drove all the way from Danville on this morning to notice that some of us are in a battle on today. So I'm going to believe that this is the on-time word for us today. And as I begin to dissect the scriptures and, and look at what God was saying in this scripture, I just want to expound today. If you will give me the time to talk to you about seven things that God is saying to you in the battle. Y'all are looking at your neighbor like, she's the neighbor preacher and she said seven things. That seems like a long sermon, but I'm going to try to get through it. Amen. Number one, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Do, not fear. do not fear. We see in verse 15 that God has spoken to them and said, be not afraid. Yeah. It says in the Bible, fear not and be not afraid 365 times. That is 365 days in a year. Except for the leap year. We know we got 366, but we'll read it twice for uh, that day. So we see here that God is literally putting his word every day for us to not fear and to not be afraid. When we live in fear, we are not changing our circumstances. When we live in fear, you are not defeating the enemy. When you live in fear, you have a we have heard God speak to many of us many times throughout our life. Fear not, for I am with you. Fear can mean one of two things. We can forget everything and run. Or we can face everything and rise. Do I have anybody that wants to rise above this morning? church because we get really happy about it but on the third day we know what happened on the third day and that's when Jesus rose from the grave and then so God is not giving me the spirit of fear but of power and love and of a sound mind number two say neighbor don't be dismayed we find in verse 15 that God is saying don't be stressed out you don't have to be troubled Get down and we pray on our knees. But a lot of times when I'm going through 
Aunt Teresa. I like to jump up. Y'all know I like to dance. I love to praise the Lord. Because you don't know you don't know what I got what I had to go through to get And I could stand here all day and tell you, but let me just tell you, I should have been sleeping in my grave this morning. Amen. But I'm here. So while I'm here and while I have breath, I like to praise him with the opportunity. And then anytime I can preach, I like to preach. And when I can sing, I like to sing. Because he brought me out of a nasty pit. He brought me out of depression, the spirit of suicide. You all don't understand me. Y'all don't understand me this morning.
Somebody say, I'm going to speak what I want to see until I see it. I'm going to speak what I want to see until I see it come to pass. Until then, I praise him until it manifests. And then after it manifests, I'm going to keep praising him because he did it. And then we don't have to talk about what God used to do. Because we can talk about what God is doing right now. Some of y'all got a testimony. And y'all just sit and don't share what God has done for you. But you are created to touch people that I cannot touch. I've never been on drugs. I've never been on alcohol. I've never done those things. So I can't tell an alcoholic how good it feels to be saved. But I can talk to a little girl who felt like she was all alone when her biological dad committed suicide. I can talk. And then I'm standing by the grace of God. You don't understand. And I don't have time to tell you everything that I've ever been through. But I tell you, if it had not been for a praying grandma, if it had not been for my praying mother, I wouldn't be standing here with you today. And then, so I'm not talking about what God used to do. I'm talking about what he's doing right now. And then I'm talking about what he's doing right now. Number seven is face the enemy with confidence. The scripture commanded them tomorrow to go out. He said, go out tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. I get up every day and the Lord is with me. You don't have to be arrogant. Arrogance ain't pretty. But you can be confident in God. You can walk with confidence. I went somewhere to sing last night at a benefit. And I just walked like I had power. Because I have power. And after church, the little girl's mom came up to me and she said, my daughter said, whoa. That girl, she said, talking about my outfit, but she said, that girl's got it. You've got to walk yes, like you've got it. You can't speak high class and live low class. You can't speak victory and live in defeat. Somebody help me preach this name this morning. You've got to live what you say. If you want to live in defeat, then live in defeat. But I've got victory in Jesus. And then quick testimony. Back in May, I was on my way, well, at the end of April, beginning of May, I was on my way to do ministry in Columbus, Ohio. And my boss called, and she basically just said, well, we're going to have to let you go at this facility. Now, granted, this doesn't mean you've lost your job, but we don't really know what we're going to do with you. And so Monday, she said, I'll let you know on Monday if we can do it. They called back Monday, and I still wasn't sure. Now, my car payment is not pretty. I gotta pay it. I gotta pay my car. I got bills. Amen. And all I could think was, Lord, what are you doing? Here I am going to ministry and now my job is basically gone. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And this came to me about my faith and my fear. He said, Amanda, when you live in fear, your faith is not in me. I was driving on 71 trying to get to Columbus crying, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. And I heard him say that, and I just shut up crying. There wasn't no need to cry about it no more. Because God already had it worked out, whatever he was doing. So I just went in faith, and, and I preached. I went in faith, and I played the drums for my friend's band. I went in faith doing what I was scheduled to do that weekend. I came home, and two weeks passed. Still hadn't heard a word. Now, most of you all know Evangelist Melinda Weathers, that is my mentor. And she is spiritual, just like my grandmother. She has that mind, like my grandmother. And, uh... I was thinking about my job and I said, Lord, I mean, in this time I've applied for 17 jobs. Never heard of work. And I thought, well, Lord, I know I'm good at what I do. Why am I not hearing from anybody? And all I could hear was, when you live in fear, your faith is contaminated. You're not even living in me. So I just shut up again. Well, okay, I know you're going to work it out. And so Monday night I went to bed and I prayed and I said, God, if you want me to let this go, tell me and I'll send my two-week notice to this company. I woke up on Tuesday and Melinda was on her way to work and she had just called me to see how I was doing and what I was up to. And she had said, you think maybe it's time for you to let that go? And I was like, I can't even tell you anything. Like usually I go to her and tell her things. And so I knew the Lord was speaking to me. And so I typed up a little brief thing and I forwarded it to her. I always tell her she makes me sound smart. 
And so then she sent it back and I sent my two week notice to my job. Don't tell her I said that. <laughs> and I sent my two week notice here. The very, I mean, 10 minutes later, I got a call for an interview at another facility. And I went to the interview on that Wednesday. It was the same week. And I walked in and it didn't feel right. You know, the Holy Ghost will tell you. And I said, Lord, this isn't it. This is not it. I'm going to go on this interview and I'm going to do what I need to do, but this is not it. I felt it as soon as I walked in the presence of the, just the presence. You, it wasn't the presence of the Lord. If that makes any sense to you. Amen. And I just sat in my seat and I did the interview and it went really well. And I left and I got my, and I got my phone and I had a missed call from the lady that I sent my two week notice to. And she had left me a voice, I'm really sad, please don't do this, call me back. And I called her back. And this is what happened, she just asked me if I wanted a promotion. There was a position open. Now I got more money. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I got paid more money. And here's the best part. I get to travel all over, and they pay for everything. They pay for the hotel. They pay for the food. So basically what I'm saying to you is I just have to show up. Y'all didn't catch that. I said I just had to show up. So they send me my schedule of where I'm supposed to be, and I just pack my bag and get in my car, and I go. I just have to show up. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. You just gotta show up. You just gotta show up. You don't understand what God wants to do for you, so you just had to show up this morning. 